Okay, so here's the plan. I picked up these airbags, nice quality. Uh, they come with the air fittings, some hose, about $80, $80 and I'm going to stick them on the back of my truck. Now, I, they do sell brackets already made, but I was afraid I have a Blue Ox uh, gooseneck hitch on here. And I didn't know how the brackets would work out with it. So what I did was is I went to a steel shop and got got them to bend me up some quarter inch plate and make angles out of it. And I'm going to reverse these bolts, drill holes in my plate, and bolt the bracket up in here. And I'm going to weld some side pieces on here for extra support. I don't know that it's actually needed. I'm going to have a lot of steel up there after I'm done. But... At any rate, um, if you'd like to see the Blue Ox hitch review and installation, I subscribe to my channel. I have a video on that. You can see real nice and clear. I did it with the bed off so you can see how it all goes on there, but I think it's a great hitch. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm, first thing I'm going to do is take those bolts out and make some marks and We'll see how it works out. Stay tuned. Okay, here's what I ended up with. Um, I notched out here for my air fitting. And I got my two holes here for my bag. Two holes here to bolt it up to the frame. Uh, it's Maybe it's not as beautiful as uh, if you ordered one from the factory, but it's perfectly functional. It's a good time too. I always tell people I'm not a professional welder. I'm self-taught. You know, if you've never welded before, this is a good opportunity to weld, learn how, get yourself a little welder, and try it out, see how it goes. I ended up I originally bent these six by six, and it was too long, is unnecessary, so I cut the back of it off too. Um, so anyways, we're going to bolt that on the truck next, and we'll see how we hook up the bottom piece for the bottom support. So here it is all bolted in place. Um, I turned the bolts around originally, if you can see them in there, they went down, and I just turned them around so nothing's protruding down where my bag is. Um, I got my bolts up top here. I can get to them if I need be or I can even unbolt it from the frame. Uh, I threw some paint on there just to stop the rust. But it's bolted up real nice and tight to my uh, gooseneck hitch. So that's all tightened and ready to go. And what I was going to do next is I got these steel plates, same thing, quarter inch steel, and I got a hole here that's going to go into the bottom of the airbag, has a bolt hole for it. Then what I did was I picked up these things just at a hardware store, and uh, I think they're going to do the trick for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick those over the spring. And then I'm going to bolt it on the bottom um, and tighten them in place. Now, the bottom is pushing down on the spring in, in numerous spots. And the weight's spread out there across the where the axle's at. I don't think there doesn't need to be much in the way of support. It just needs to hold it in place. Um, I think a quarter inch steel, you know, pushing down across the spring is going to be plenty strong enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt all that up next and then we'll move on to what's left so everything's bolted in place um, the bottom plate I did put double nuts down there and Loctite uh, I just don't want it vibrating loose for some reason my bolts like to vibrate loose in here so I've been using more and more Loctite you see the air fitting up here where I have the hose coming out. And what I was giving was these air fittings. 
So, you know, you slide the nut, of course, up over the line, and then you tighten it up over top of it. But they do not give you any way to uh, put the air in or end it. Now, hindsight, I might have just bought a fitting for it. I know they make one. But at any rate, I'm out here. I'm trying to get this thing done. So here's what I did. I bought some brass fittings. Uh, this thing here is... I got it at a hardware store, it's called a tank fill valve, and then I got a quarter inch to three eighths reducer. So then I stuck a three eighths piece of copper in there and, and put it all together. Um, and I used a compression nut to go from three eighths to half inch. Now there is a difference between air fittings and compression fittings. Um, a compression fitting is perfectly fine as long as it's put on there properly. As you can see here, I have this one so you have some overlap in it. And when you put these on, they have these crush sleeves and you want the sleeve to crush down on there. But you can make them too tight and damage the crush sleeve and you don't want that. So what I usually do is, is tighten them up on there and then take them back off and check and, and see where my crush sleeve is at. And you just want it crushed enough that it's it's actually compressing the pipe a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bolt this. I actually have a tool body, so I'm going to bolt this up underneath and um, you know use it to fill and let air in and out. Um, one other thing, for some strange reason, it says here on these tags that if you live in California, you can get cancer from these. So, if you live in California, you want to be careful. Very strange. How can you get cancer from a fitting? Anyway, um, my airline's going to go up. And like I say, I do have a tool body in it. There's, you can tell it's awful close right here. I'm going to stick a piece of rubber hose on there to protect it so the other thing is you want to make sure everything's tied up real tight and it does not rubble or bounce around because that will eventually wear holes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick the rest of this together and then we're gonna give it a try and see how it works okay so everything's hooked up <clears throat> I just want to point out a couple things um, if you do something like I did, you want to check for leaks. I'll show you why, what I mean. You see the bubbles coming out of there. So that means if every day you're going to come out, you're not going to have pressure in your airbag. So this airbag is inflated. Um, it's real nice and solid. Some of it is personal preference about how much pressure you want in it. Um, it this is... My truck weighs about 8,500 pounds, and according to the instructions, if you have a motorhome or something like this, you want to start out around 90 pounds. Uh, if it's too stiff, it's just going to make your ride miserable, but you never want to ride them empty either. You always keep at least 5 to 10 pounds of pressure in it no matter what. And the rest is going to be personal preference, ride, leveling. You want your truck level, so if you hook up your trailer to it or throw a bag of scoop of sand in the back, you know, you can level it out. That's what the airbags are for. So anyway, i got to fix my leak here. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, make sure you don't have any leaks anywhere. I just use a, this is just a heating and air conditioning brand uh, leak detector. But you can buy leak detectors at any plumb in place or like this. Uh, just a soap bubble solution. Uh, I hope this helps somebody out. And be sure to subscribe to my videos. I have a lot more Dodge stuff. And take a look at our website. Uh, how to number two fix videos uh, You all have a good day. And we'll see you next time.